In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the CSWA practice exam problem number two. To start off this problem, let's start by opening a new part file in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, and again, before we begin any problem related to the CSWA, the first thing we do is check our unit system. This particular part is in inch pound second, so we select that option down there. In the material, we can right click, and the material is in, shows up here under edit material. Alloy steel, click apply and close. Now our material is confirmed. Uh, the origin is arbitrary, meaning we don't have to place the origin in any special location, and the amount of decimal places we need to use for this is two. So without further ado, let's start our part. I'm gonna start by selecting my top plane, creating a two-dimensional sketch on that plane. And um, I'm going to start with a rectangle and a neat little trick to create a rectangle um, centered about the origin is if you make a construction line, click the construction line and the origin, and click midpoint. Now that is going to be centered by default here. So the width of the part is dimension B, which is 1.25. The length of the part is dimension A, which is 2.125. Okay. Um, now I'm going to select circle tool, centering my circle at the midpoint over here, snapping up to there, do a little trim action, make these two tangent, um, and I need to, oh, it looks like I lost, what relationship did I, oh, there we go, I need to make this to appear tangent, and now everything is fully defined. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw create the hole here. So I'm going to do this in this feature. I'm going to dimension this as 0 0.750 diameter. I'm going to extrude this up the thickness of the base, which is not clearly defined in the problem statement. But if you look in the notes, it says the wall thickness is 0.25. So that is the correct thickness there. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this surface. I'm going to sketch on this surface. And I'm going to draw a circle to that point, and I'm gonna convert entities on this inside circle. And then I can go to features, extrude boss space, bring this up. Um, the total height is 0.5, this is 0.25, so 0.25 merge result is correct. That gives me that portion of the, uh, of the part. Next, I'm gonna go to this back side, and I'm gonna sketch on this back side, looking normal to my sketch plane. And I'm going to convert entities on this top surface. I'm going to draw a line up. I'm going to draw my, my tangent arc from this line over to here. I'm going to draw a line down to there. So there's the sketch profile that I just created. And the center of this arc relative to the top of this surface is... 0.5, okay, um, oh, look at that, that's an arc. I don't want that to be an arc. Let's bring that down to there, bring this over to there, make this and this tangent, and we should then be fully defined. Oh, what am I missing? Oh, this line needs to be vertical. Now we're fully defined. Okay, so the thickness of this is 0.375. So I'm going to do a features extrude boss base. That's the incorrect way. So I'm going to flip the direction using the toggle flip button there. 0.375, merge result. There's that. Next, I'm going to create a sketch on this surface, a simple circle um, centered right there. This dimension is 0.75, fully defined, features extrude boss base. This protrusion is 0 0.440. Press the check, there's that feature. So next there's this little pocket on the inside here. Um, so I'm gonna create the sketch for that pocket. Let's sketch a rectangle on this surface. Um, this rectangle has dimensions of 0.875. The height of this rectangle is 0 0.310. Um, it's a little confusing on how where this is located relative to everything. So uh, this edge is, uh, 
called out at point 0.188 from here. So point 0.188, there's that. And this line is actually coincident with this surface. And so if I click this line and click that edge or that point in this line and say coincident, that will bring that in and fully define that. So I'm done now with this pocket. I could have added the radiuses in the sketch here, but I'm gonna use the fillet feature to do that. And so now I'm gonna do a feature cut extrude and I'm gonna bring that in by a depth. Um, okay, so this depth is called out as 0 0.06 from this back surface right here. So instead of direction, I can say offset from surface. I can click this surface and I could say 0 0.06 is my offset distance. And so you see that now defines this distance as that offset reading 0 0.06. Hit the check and that is now complete. Now I'm gonna go into my fillet feature. So up here, fillet feature, my radius is 30,000, so 0 0.03. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select the edges that I want to fill it, which is basically all of these edges on the interior of this pocket. Okay, once you have your preview and you're happy with that, I always like to see a full preview when I'm doing that. Hit the check. There's our radiuses. Now I'm going to select this surface and I'm going to sketch a circle on the circle. And this has a diameter of 0.136. And this circle is located from this edge, 0.125. And the height of this is again, not necessarily the most clear how it's, how it's called out and defined. Um, but I believe it's assumed that it's in the center. And so because it's not so clear and, and visually when you look at it, it looks like it's in the center. I think that's what you have to assume in this in this particular example. So uh, one way to center this is you could select an edge in the pocket, convert entities, make that edge construction, and then create another construction line from here to the midpoint, and then make that line horizontal. And now that's fully defined linked to that edge. Um, there's other ways to do it, but that's the way that I thought of off the top of the head there. So extrude cut. Let's make this go through all, to go through both sides as we know that it does. Now we have our hole going through the side. The next step is that I'm gonna create the, the ribbed feature. Um, so you could do this a couple different ways, like anything in life. You could use a extrude, or you can use this nice rib feature up here. So the rib feature is pretty slick. Um, I'm gonna do that. And to do that, you need, basically need to create a sketch on a plane centered on the rib, which coincidentally is my front plane. So I'm gonna go sketch, sketch. And to create a, a ribbed feature, you just need a single line. I'm gonna make this line, the endpoint of that line, coincident with this surface. And I know the angle of this line relative to that is 30 degrees. And I know that the top point is 0.5 above here, so 0.50. And then this, I'm just gonna make it come all the way down to this point, so coincident there. So you see I have a fully defined line. You can kind of see how that plays out there. Features rib. So that's showing you the direction of the rib, which is correct. I want the material to add down. You can, there's some options here to flip the direction. And so if you want to flip it on the other side, you would check that box. I don't, the thickness is right here. I want that to be 0.250 and hit the check, and there is our rib. Uh, the next thing is I'm gonna add the fillet here in the corner. So the radius of that fillet is 0.1. Come in here and click that edge. There gives me my nice preview. Hit the check. All right. The last step is to create the holes going through the angled surface right here. So this is one of the more challenging parts of this problem, I think. And the way that I would do this, and I like to do this, is to create reference geometry. So I'm gonna go insert, reference geometry, axes. Um, I'm gonna select my cylinder to create an axis through my cylinder right there. Now I can say insert reference geometry plane, select that axis I just created, as well as my front plane that goes to the center of the part. Now with these two references, I can select the angle and type in a specified angle. 
Nice. Okay, so um, now that I have a plane at that angle, I can create a three-dimensional hole wizard. So if you click hole wizard, I'm going to click the surface that I want to put the hole on first. Click the surface you want to put the hole on, then do hole wizard. It works both ways, but it's, it's a little bit easier this way. My hole diameter is a 0.136. So let's select a normal hole. All right. Let's look at our custom sizing. Make sure we go down to the one that says 0.136. Too far. So 136 is a number 29 drill. And our end condition is going to be up to next because we want to break through the wall. Positions, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select just to anywhere there. And now I can select the plane, select the point of my hole and say on plane. Now it's still blue because its elevation is not defined. But I know if I click this surface and click the point, that elevation is supposed to be 0.19. Okay, we're fully defined, our hole's going through, hit the check, happiness. Now, I can take that hole, my front plane, go to mirror, mirror that feature over to the other side, hit the check, and now I am done with my part. So at this point, the last step is to go mass properties under the evaluate tab, and you can see your mass of your part is, And we're done. Again, if you needed to change the number of decimal places, which we don't, you would go to Options, Custom Settings, and you could change the decimal places up here. Great. Thanks for watching.